In this video, I'm going to give you some examples of financial engineering. In last week's video, I introduced the concept of financial engineering, and we walked through some beginning examples of what that looks like. In this video, what I want to do is give you some examples, some more advanced examples of financial engineering. And this video is all about giving you some insight into how powerful accounting and corporate finance can be. But before we jump into these examples, I want to start by talking about the term financial engineering. So this is obviously somebody who came along who decided to take the word finance and take the word engineering and smoosh them together to create financial engineering. And the idea here is that finance professionals can approach designing a business with the same tools, um, the same advanced mathematics, the same rigor that an engineer does, uses when an engineer designs a machine. Now, this is not an exact pairing of words because businesses are full of people and people are not the same thing as parts used in a machine. But um, this is still a very powerful idea that you can use um, to apply to solving business problems. Now, I wanted to start by talking about the term financial engineering because unfortunately, this term has taken on some negative connotations. A lot of people hear the term financial engineering and they think, hmm, this sounds like a scam. <laughs> and it's important to realize why people think that. And this is what a lot of people see when they see financial engineering take place. They'll see finance professionals go into a company and they'll radically restructure a company's financial statements. So they'll take these financial statements and they'll flip them upside down, they'll turn them inside out, and they'll restructure the company. And then those finance professionals will walk away from the company and instantly the stock price goes up. And the stock price goes up while nothing about the operations of the business has changed. Nothing has changed other than all of these changes on pieces of paper in the accounting department. And so people look at that and they say, huh, that seems a little fishy. How can that be? Um, but in fact, there's a tremendous amount of value being created. And I think a lot of people don't really understand what's going on in that process. So I want to really talk through this. Um, what's happening in this next example. So the first example I want to talk about of financial engineering is restructuring a company. So imagine you have a company with two departments and one department operates a chain of restaurants and the second department manufactures washing machines. So these are two very different types of business, but they're together underneath the same business umbrella. Now there's a lot of different reasons why a business could develop this way. It could have developed this way just organically. Um, it could be the result of two businesses being combined in the past. Um, but what's, what exists today in this example is that you have these two very distinct businesses um, combined within one overall business. Now, just imagine for a moment that you were able to split this business up into two separate businesses. So now you have one business that's just the restaurant business and you have a separate business that is the manufacturing business. Well, when you separate those out, the value of those individual businesses immediately increases. Now, why does that happen? It's because of capital markets. So imagine this from the investor's perspective. An investor is looking at these companies along with a whole lot of other companies. And investors are constantly valuing different companies to look for investment opportunities. And so when they're valuing companies, if these two divisions were combined within one company, 
that would be very difficult to value. Um, would you value it as a restaurant company or a manufacturing company? It's very difficult because the financials are all smushed together. And so when an investor looks at that, what they're going to end up doing is discounting the value of your company for that uncertainty. They don't really know how to value that. And so the value of your company will be less than it could be. If you split them apart, it's easier to value a restaurant company and it's easier to value a manufacturing company. And so you don't have to worry about an investor being uncertain and discounting that value. The other thing that's going on here is that there's different types of investors out there. There's investors that are looking for restaurant companies and there's investors that are looking for manufacturing companies. But there are very few investors looking for a, a weird combination of restaurant and manufacturing in the same company. Those investors just aren't out there. And so <laughs> capital markets work the same way as everything else. There's supply and demand. And the more investors that are looking to invest in your type of company, the higher your stock price is likely going to be. And the higher your stock price can be, uh, the more everybody in the company benefits. Accounting is a product you are creating for your investors. And the closer you can make your accounting to meeting your investors' needs, the better off your company will be. I know there's a lot of business owners that spend a lot of time thinking about the products that they sell to their customers. And they think about, do my products meet my customers' needs? Well, you need to take that same mindset and apply it to your accounting. Is my accounting meeting my investors' needs? That's what financial engineering is about. Now, I have some big warnings about this example that I want to talk through. First of all, this is not a one-size-fits-all example. I am not advocating that you always split every company up. That is not what I'm saying here. There, many times, that does not make business sense. So every company is a unique situation, and so you need to be really thoughtful about how you're applying financial engineering, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. Second, I make this example sound very easy, <laughs> and it's not. When you split up a company, at the very least, you're going to have to go back three years into your historical financials and split those up as well and show how your finances have been two separate companies going back three years. That is very difficult to do. Now, you might be telling yourself at this point, my business is too small. This doesn't really apply to me. Well, I want you to be careful here because in 10 years, this might apply to you. You might be in a situation where some of these concepts make sense. And so if you can think 10 years ahead of time and understand how financial engineering works, you can set up your accounting in advance to avoid a lot of headaches in the future. A massive company restructuring is a dramatic example of financial engineering. Um, but I want to switch to a more commonplace example of what financial engineering looks like. And that has to do with pricing. Um, pricing is a very complicated area. Um, a lot of businesses out there set prices using their gut. <laughs> and so there's more rigorous methods that you can use that will benefit your business. If you approach pricing decisions with the same rigor an engineer does, you can do things like use advanced mathematics or use statistics, use mathematical models, use algorithms, use computer programs. And all of these are tools to be very thoughtful about how you set your prices. That's what financial engineering is. It's approaching designing your business processes with this rigorous engineering mindset. So those are two examples of financial engineering. I hope this really gave you a sense of what is possible and what's out there. Um, financial engineering is about using financial tools and techniques to get the most value out of your business. 
If you liked this video, click on the subscribe button down below. I release a new video every week on accounting and corporate finance, so come back and check out next week's video.